We start in the name of God, the most beneficial, the most merciful. All praise is due to God, the Lord of the world, worlds. And may peace and blessings of God be upon the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and companions. Students, faculty, friends and colleagues, I greet you all with the Islamic greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today is the third event in a series of events called Israeli Apartheid Week, a call to boycott, divest, and sanction. Sponsored by the Muslim Student Union, the goal of the events this week is to educate and raise awareness on campus about the plight of the Palestinian people with the hope that this knowledge will turn into action. Our annual week has unfortunately, unfortunately often been, been misconstrued to be one that harbors anti-Semitism. The MSU, the Muslim Student Union, has clarified numerous times and will continue to clarify that hatred of any particular group on the basis of their race, color, ethnicity, or religion, including people of the Jewish faith, is not and will not be tolerated. We will be the first to speak out against these injustices, just as we will speak up against any other form of racism, no matter what group it targets. Although this goes without saying, the Muslim Student Union strives to explicitly state its beliefs nonetheless. It is absolutely hypocritical and immoral to label anyone who has the courage to stand up and speak out against the genocidal Zionist policies of Israel as anti-Semitic. The week's aim, in short, is simply to call for an end to the oppression of the indigenous people of Palestine. Just as, just as it would make sense to call for an end to the oppression that took place in Nazi Germany, it is absolutely imperative that we call for an end to 62 years of systematic subjugation and repression of the Palestinian people. Co-sponsors for this week include the Asian Pacific Students Association, Indian Subcontinental, Indian Subcontinental Club, Kababayan, Middle East Studies Student Initiative, Mesha, Pakistani Student Association, the Radical Student Union, Society of Arab Students, and the Worker Student Alliance. Before we begin today's events, we'll begin with the sum of verses from the Muslim holy book, holy book the Quran. They fight in God's way, they kill and are killed. 
This is the true promise given by him in the Torah, the Gospel, and the Quran. Who could be more faithful to his promise than God? So be happy with the bargain you have made. That is the supreme time. The believers are those who turn to God in repentance, who worship and praise Him, who bow down and prostrate themselves, who order what is good and forbid what is wrong, and who observe God's limits. Give glad news to such believers. Well, okay. <clears throat> Dr. Hatem, Hatem Bazian is a senior lecturer in the departments of Near Eastern and Ethnic Studies at the University of California, Berkeley. A prominent activist, author, and commentator on, on current affairs and international human rights, Dr. Bazian has particular expertise in issues relating to Palestine, the Middle East, and Muslims. He has written a book, Jerusalem and Islamic Consciousness, and is currently working on two other works involving Muslim issues and the war on terror. Tonight, Dr. Bazian will provide answers to the oft-repeated questions regarding the roots of the conflict in the Israeli-occupied Palestine, answers that remain essential tools to understanding the current situation there. Without further ado, Dr. Hatem Bazian. permission, uh, if you're especially going to make money of it or want to distribute it, it's copyrighted material. Uh, so I uh, would actually ask you if you want to do anything with that, uh, to come and see me and have some type of a release form or a contract that you have to indicate your ability to use uh, the material. Uh, this is part of what you call uh, intellectual property, which we have wreaked havoc in much of the third world, but nevertheless, uh, this is the reality. Uh, I've been tasked today to speak and address the history of the Palestine uh, question. Uh, but it's always when you begin to uh, contemplate the Palestine question, uh, you're confronted of when and at what point do you start. Uh, there is already a privileging of the starting point of uh, the history of Palestine. Uh, often it actually places the starting point at 1000 BC. Uh, that itself is a very problematic starting point. Uh, for any historian of the region who knows that the history of the area that we commonly define in the university as the Near East uh, definitely extends uh, beyond uh, 1000 BC. And therefore, this is in one way privileging a particular reading of the biblical narrative and also privileging a particular understanding of the history of Palestine. Uh, so if we want to begin to locate the history of the Palestinians per se, uh, we have to actually go much, much earlier uh, to the land that is known in history as the land of the Canaanites. Uh, even though the, today we often dismiss the notion of the Canaanites and we don't give much recognition to the fact that this territory uh, was known as uh, such with the specific designation of a people that lived in there uh, known as uh, the Canaanites as well as a number of other tribes and civilization. Second, that the land of the Canaanites was interconnected to uh, a whole region uh, that in our own understanding and as, as far as uh, historical record and archaeological record shows uh, has been known to be the uh, fountainhead of civilization. Uh, many of us understood that Mesopotamia is one of the cradles of civilization, uh, the Nile Valley is another uh, area of being the fountainhead of civilization. And Palestine, likewise, uh, is recognized as being one of the areas where civilization had found uh, some of its early roots. Now, I know somebody's going to stand up and say, well, uh, where are the Canaanites today? And that's a legitimate question, but we'll leave it to some archaeologists to 
uh, explore.